There are many things that your boy Avery does not see anymore in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I've been playing competitively for 16 years now, and a lot's changed. And it's not just the power creep, or my facial hair, or my chest hair. Many more things have changed. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1300 ladder. Yeah, we're not talking about Exodia for a change, <laughs> since my last two uploads were about the new support and all that fun stuff. I'm still kind of recovering from my trip to Moffitt Cancer Center, so I'm trying to upload as much as I can. I'm just, I'm so worn out, ladies and gentlemen. So, I hope y'all understand that and have a fantastic day. I hope you're enjoying your day. So... I was sitting back thinking about what do I want to upload, what, I, what do I want to talk about? And playing the game for 16 years, you see a lot of things come and go, whether it be players, whether it be tech cards, whether it be cards that people want back today like Max C, which better not ever happen because I'll quit the game. Because uh, every single time that I go to play a game, you know what's going to happen. I'm going to lose the die roll. The opponent's going to go first. They're going to build a board. I'm going to draw for turn. They're going to go, Max C, bitch boy. I had to look down at the clock real quick, make sure I didn't cuss within the first minute. <laughs> so... Yeah, it just things like that don't need to happen. And things like that in that regard have changed for the better in the game. I mean, I remember, God, throughout all my years of playing, I remember when Gladiator Beast was actually a good deck. Gladiator Beast used to be the deck that everybody would fall back to at the beginning of every format. Now, granted, back then, I think we got a balance like every nine months. Then they swapped it to every six, and then we didn't have an end date for the longest time. Um... But those were much different times. Those were much different power creep days. Now, I mean, an extra deck has 15 cards and people kind of want that extended. Which is kind of strange, especially because of the fact that we went from having no limit on the extra deck. Which, fun fact, the old DS games uh, actually capped you at 30, even though there was no limit. Um, but the extra deck wasn't all that good back then, otherwise known as the fusion deck. And... It's interesting to look back and see even like how decks are built. You know, we didn't have a bunch of hand traps back then like we do now. And so something that I feel has changed, especially with that, is that hand traps are like the new battle traps. You know, you don't see at least the top tier decks playing things like Mirror Force. You don't see top tier decks playing things like Magic Cylinder. Not that top tier decks ever were. I mean, if you're a, a dedicated burn player, like you're playing a deck dedicated to a burn strategy, yeah, you might play things like Magic Cylinder. But... No one's playing Mirror Forces anymore. No one's playing Drowning Mirror Force even. Like, the last time I played a Mirror Force competitively was when I played Trickstar and got 18th place at a uh, regional in Kissimmee, Florida. It was near the end of Tier 0 Zodiac format, and I played Trickstar. No one knew what the deck did. And I remember I played, what was it, two Storming Mirror Forces and one... Like, no, it was two Blazing Mirror Force and one Storming Mirror Force, because I didn't have a third Blazing, because you just pop all their monsters and do some burn damage, along with your other Trickstar monsters doing burn. So, like, that was the last time, you know, I really ever saw success with, like, a Mirror Force card. Now Mirror Force cards are garbage. Like, even the new Dark Magician Mirror Force S card that they revealed a few days ago, it's cute. It's okay. I mean, it's Dark Magician support. The Dark Magician's never going to be a good deck unless something just absolutely insane comes out. But something that I saw some people talking about in my Is Yu-Gi-Oh! Dying video, several people, I'm assuming are subscribers to the channel, feel that Yu-Gi-Oh! is already dead. And that's due to the fact that the power creep has been so hard. Like, I would argue over the past few years. And I think that that's due to the fact that just Konami has to keep on printing better and better cards, you know, Every now and then we're going to be getting new hand traps that they have to put into the game or even just some offshoot ones, you know, like when we first got Ash Blossom, Ash Blossom was obviously like an over $60 card and then we eventually got Ghost Ogre and all these other things and now like Yu-Gi-Oh has evolved to what it is today where, you know, you're playing a 40 card deck ideally and anywhere from 9 to possibly 15 depending on the format of those cards in your 40 card deck are some kind of hand traps. And then maybe some other cards are non-engine, and then you're playing like 20-ish, maybe 12 to 15 cards. That's like your main engine. So, you know, take that for what you will. Every deck is different in that regard. But even the power creep just feels like it's gotten so much crazier over time. And I don't feel like you really saw that in Yu-Gi-Oh! back in the day. You know, we went from 
Dark Arm Return. Then once we got Synchros, it became Teleport Dark Arm, aka Teledad, with Crush Card Virus. But it felt like the power creep, I mean, granted hindsight being 2020, it felt like the power creep was not as explosive in those gaps. You know, you look at something like even 2012, where like you had these different decks that you could play in 2012, like post Abyss Rising, like that's actually kind of a niche format that not a lot of people talk about, is Abyss Rising format in 2012, before we got, what was it, Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy that dropped out the Dragon Rulers? Once you got the Dragon Rulers, it was like just it stood head and shoulders above everything else. Like, you were not playing Fire Fist. You were not playing Rescue Rabbit if you were playing against Dragon Rulers because you were going to get absolutely decimated. You had to play Dragon Rulers or you were not winning the ballgame. Similar to Tier Element in that regard, once they got the Ishizu cards. You know, it was interesting to see how good Tier was at full power uh, when it was post-power of the elements. But then we got the Ishizu cards, and we saw how explosive that deck became and how much crazier it got just because of a few support cards. And that's what I mean. We're like, you know, a card that does like 50 different things just didn't exist in the game. You know, back in 2008, 2009, Dark Arm Dragon summoning it out with exactly three darks in your grave and then being able to remove from play a dark monster in your graveyard to target a card on the field and pop it wasn't once per turn, but that was like crazy. People were like, oh, this is the peak of Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, you can't print something more busted than this unless it's just like a custom card on, you know, Dueling Book, Dueling Network back then. Now we have things like, you know, even an Exodia Fusion monster that doesn't lose to a Dark Arm because it just gained life points equal to your attack, or it gains attack points equal to your current life points, and it can't be destroyed by card effects. So, like, something like Dark Arm just looks like it's terrible. And even now, a card like Dark Arm Dragon is just terrible because... It's not good going first. You know, the whole idea of deck building now has changed because instead of trying to grind it out like it's a chess match, instead you're trying to, you know, build a board or put out as many interruptions as possible, you know, or you're trying to pants people like how I pants people with Centurion. You know, you ash my Primera. Okay, I'm sitting on three interruptions in my hand because of hand traps, which is insane. It makes a basic board like just Primera getting hand trapped and passing. Now I've got three interruptions for the cards in your hand. I'm going to win because I have more interruptions. You know, people say, oh, it's just a build my board negate. I'm going to Dark Ruler no more you. Even Fire King doesn't put out a lot of negates, which is interesting to see, especially from the Power Creep perspective of Yu-Gi-Oh! In that... Decks have gone, well, the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! has obviously gone from like a chess match or a checkers match. I've seen some people say GOAT formats like chess, but all the other formats are in Yu-Gi-Oh! like checkers, which is a very interesting way to put it. Um, but we've gone from these slow roll, grindy, plus one advantage games to now it's like you're going to go plus seven in a turn, ideally. And you're either going to have a bunch of negates on the board that the opponent has to out. Or you're just going to have so many interruptions like in Fire King where you've got the Promethean Princess to pop a card. You've got the Flamberge to summon Mascarena, which can make either Little Knight, uh, Obama Whale, as I call it, Appalosa, a Zelantis, like a whatever. And like that's what you're playing through. You're not necessarily playing through the gates unless, you know, obviously it's like Appalosa or something. But I don't know. I've just been feeling really nostalgic about these older formats. And like by no means am I quitting the game anytime soon. It's just... The game feels so foreign now, and it almost makes it kind of difficult to go back to these older formats when things like Mirror Force, Bottomless Trap Hole existed, where, like, top decking a Bottomless Trap Hole in a grind game was pretty good. If you're top decking a Bottomless now, you're probably a Trap Tricks player about to lose the ball game. Like, I don't even know if Trap Tricks even plays Bottomless anymore. But let me know what you guys think. I mean, it... Is there something that I'm missing about the game? Not that I hate the current format. I've just been sort of taking a break because I already have my invite. And I don't feel like spending $1,000 on Fire King. So I've just been kind of sitting back watching the format evolve and seeing what happens. I may still go to the YCS in North Carolina in, what, like April? Whatever it is. But there's there was a magic in those older formats that I feel just has been lost over time. And that's not necessarily a bad thing i think that just comes from the fact that i've been playing this game for 16 years you're going to see change you know if you work at a job for almost 20 years you're going to see change whether it's in management whether it's in the company as a whole whether it's in the hot secretary that you used to stare at when clocking in <laughs> that sounds so creepy but guys let me know what you think down in the comments below i just wanted to wonder rant i wanted to get this off my mind. I've been having a lot going on and 
I think it's a nice way to kind of just upload a nice video and say, hey, we're in 2024. Let's uh, let's see where the game's going. So, guys, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.